All right, so we're on getting this car pulled off here. Looks like it's super simple. There's a, a spring here for the throttle return, which just unclips off of here. You can lay that back on the manifold. There's a, uh, a fuel line that goes into it, and there's four bolts to hold it down. And there's a throttle linkage, which is nothing more than one clip here. That I'm going to push down with a screwdriver and disconnect. And now, with that clip folded out of the way, hopefully you can see that this, that this rod just falls out. Oops, and this bracket fell off here. This little attaching point fell off with it. So set that to the side so you don't lose it. And I went ahead and used some of this PB Blast to soak the mounting bolts because I don't know what sort of shape those things are in, but hopefully they're going to be pretty crusty. And then I soaked the Flare fitting with the fuel line goes in as well, just to try to get some lubrication in there. See if we can make sure it's not corroded. I'm worried it, I'm not going to take it off. It's just going to bind up on this old copper steel line here and twist the thing up. But I'll go ahead and take that off. There should be, on most applications, you'd have this choke cable hooked up. Clearly, mine is uh, not hooked up and has seen better days. To figure out what to do with that and see if that cable even moves anymore. Um, there's a vacuum line to the distributor on this side that just pulls off. Maybe I'll switch that camera angle. So I'll switch to the camera to this side since it seems like most of the stuff is on this side. Here's the vacuum hose that goes to the distributor for timing advance. Um, to break this flare nut loose here is a great time to break up those flare tubing wrenches that your dad gave you that you never have found a use for. And let's see if we can see this PB Blast helped us out here. Oh man, it's kind of rounded off. Oh, well, this might actually move. You can see where somebody's had this off before and they've really rounded this this nut off here and with the regular wrench we might have had the same luck where it was just it would have just slipped around there and not uh not come off. Wow it's really stuck kinda of binding up there. This thing looks like somebody has stacked two different size nuts around the base of it. There's a half inch nut here, which is just not a big deal. And it looks like the rest of these are probably 7 sixteenths. I'm not sure what the OEM ones were, but I assume they matched. So normally you would have to take a screwdriver and loosen this connection here where the choke cable goes through. You just loosen that and then you would loosen this hold down here that actually holds the sheeting of the cable for the choke cable. And the choke cable, as you pull it back, it pulls this thing down and I guess this plate would move with it, which the plate's kind of stuck here. There it goes. Might have to reset that a little bit too. but. Anyway, that would be it, and then uh, if you had an electric choke on here, you'd pull the electric choke wire, and that would be the end of that. So it should come off real quick. Oh yeah. So maybe you can see the gasket even. So here's this carb set on the table. Here's the rebuild kit that I got for it. This is a uh, Walker product. This is for those Ford uh, 2100s, or 2200, whatever's on this thing. So this is a uh, 15369 D. So I'll post a I'll post that part number in the link so that you can actually see what kit we're doing. If you're looking up trying to how to install this kit, and hopefully this will help you out. So, you can kind of... so here's the kit they give you. Looks like it's super simple, super straightforward compared to a lot of the 
like a holly four barrel kit you get or a quadra jet kit or something that comes with a bunch of check balls and needles and that sort of stuff in it. Uh, looks like two base gaskets they give you which is nice. Um, looks like there's a intermediary gasket here for two different style of carbs. And our small gasket, the accelerator pump diaphragm. There's another accelerator bit here. Oops, I lied. There's two check balls in there so that should be that should be fun. Uh, electric, these are gaskets for an electric choke, which we're not going to use because this carburetor is manual. A couple of miscellaneous gaskets we'll probably find as we go through. And a needle and seat, which is probably this carburetor's biggest problem. It appears as though the fuel pump is just overrunning or overriding the needle and seat that's in there now and causing it to just force fuel through the bowl and down the venturias and causing this thing to run super, super rich. All right, so tools I'm hoping to use. It looks like most of this will come apart with a like a good size flathead and a regular size flathead and a couple of razor blades to clean things up. Looks like there's a couple of uh, nuts on here as well, but for the most part, it looks like a flathead, um, and like a half inch and seven sixteenths wrench will get you. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take this apart. We'll see what it looks like on the end. So other tools we have here are the just use a. 7 16 half inch, just a wrench and a ratchet. And then, so I got to use brake clean just to clean the outside of the thing off. It's usually more inexpensive than the choking carburetor cleaner is, but just to spray off all this junk on the outside that's on here. Um, it gets rid of all the grease and stuff and leaves a nice clean finish. And then for the supports and passageways inside the carburetor, I use some sort of carbon choke cleaner. Uh, you can use this, Berryman's. I typically just kind of find whatever's on sale and use that. So we use that for all the ports and stuff once we get inside of there. Uh, so we'll start out with taking this uh, center nut out of here. And then these two screws on top. There's two more screws back here it looks like. That one has a lock washer on it. So now we're at a three for four that have lock washers, and the nice thing is they're all the same length. I'll just loosen this adjuster nut up on the top of it, and hopefully this uh, top will just slide up. Hopefully this top will just slide up over this adjuster. But for that, I need a smaller socket. Ooh, a quarter inch. All right, so quarter inch socket and I'll kind of take a mental note of how how much threads how many threads are sticking out of the top of this thing looks so like we've probably got a sixteenth of an inch or so where that the nylon nut is sticking up above the the threaded post there so we'll try to set that back as a baseline I'm guessing by the way this choke is operating we're gonna have to adjust this some more a little bit later but kind of take note that there's a Nylon stop here that's sleeved, and there's a spring that goes inside of it, and that spring just goes over this rod and holds the thing down. Set that off to the side, and then this thing hopefully. No, nope, still not gonna work. Nope, there he goes. Yeah, so it just pulls out of there. And looks like the top of this can just be set to the side for cleaning. I don't see a whole lot of. Uh, critical fuel flow stuff in this component here in this hat. Alright, so now we get down into more of the, the base of the carb here. And you can see there's a gasket in here, uh, which looks like it's probably... There's two gaskets here, and you can see the one that we have has three holes in it. So those, if we, if we note the holes here in one, two, three, we'll also see that there's three holes. Get this guy out of the way. There's one, two, three holes, so that'll replace this gasket inside of here. So we'll take this guy off and discard it. And that lets us get down into the needle and seat area down in here in the float. And you can see down inside of here that there's all kinds of like leaves and debris and junk sitting in there. So I'm going to get that stuff cleaned out for sure.
So then to get this float mechanism out of here, there's a keeper spring. Oh. Alright, so we're looking down inside of the float chamber now. And the way we're going to take this float mechanism out of here is to pop this little wire inside of here. We're going to pop it loose. The way we do that is push it this direction towards the outside wall to the back of the uh, needle and seat mechanism and it should just come up out of there. Famous last words. There it goes. And so it pops right up and that should, that's what holds the float mechanism in place. The idea is that this float should just come up out of here. And it does, and there's a spring there to hold it back in place. There's a, oops, can I see that? Yeah, the spring wire here goes back and holds that float back in place there. So, well, uh, and the needle here is on the, oops, the needle here is also on the underside of this float, so we'll be careful not to lose that, although we're going to replace that, and that's probably a culprit as to why this thing's uh, blowing fuel out. We'll shake it. To make sure we don't hear any fuel sloshing inside of there. And if we did, we'd have to somehow look for a crack around the seam here and oops, maybe solder this thing back up if it was uh, solder this thing back up if it had a leak in it somewhere. But my gosh, so far this thing seems like it's not leaking, so I think we're okay. I'll set that aside for some later use. And then again, down inside of this thing, this is probably where a lot of the Bad stuff's going on. There's two jets in there. There's two uh, similar looking circles down at the bottom. Um, and then that power valve is down at the bottom there as well. So I'll take those jets out. Definitely run some carburetor through those jets individually. Make sure they're good and clean. Take the power valve out of there and you can see all that trash and the old leaves and stuff that are in there. Get that out of there. And then on the front side here, this is the accelerator pump. So we'll start here with the accelerator pump. Hopefully this lighting gives us a better view of what's going on here. Again, these are quarter inch bolts in the sky. We'll take these out of here one by one. Bolts. And also take note that the um, spring return on this thing is toward our, our fuel intake side here. So this guy just comes out, we'll set it to the side again. So here is the point where you want to be really careful because there is a spring underneath this um, this accelerator pump. So when you take this last screw out, you want to be careful that you don't have this thing to shoot off. So when you break it loose, see it just wants to come up by itself. And um, then if you look underneath here, there's a spring right there. It's pushing up on that accelerator pump diaphragm. And again, another part you'll probably recognize from the kit there. So we'll take this guy off of here. And take note that it's on that inside hole again for our maximum shot of fuel and acceleration. I'll take the spring out of here and make sure we Take note that the big side of the spring goes down, the small side of the spring comes up kind of like a cone. Set that aside, and then this actually, that orange valve, we'll take note of that, and it's going to come out of here because we again saw, again saw one of those right here in the kit. So we're going to replace that guy as well. But for now, we'll take it out. I'm just going to put a screwdriver under it here, and this comes off pretty gently my thumb over it and pull it out. Oops, maybe not. And we should be able to just reach down to the inside and take that guy out there and then it just fell out. So at this point um, we'll, we'll go ahead and pull these two jets out of the we'll pull these two jets out of the base and we'll flip this thing over and pull this power valve out of here as well. So just a big screwdriver and these jets come out of here. These are the two jets you would change if you wanted to change the mixture on the truck, how it was running. I can't see that. Um, 
you would change the size of these jets down here. And you could do this on the truck by pulling the, the top hat off, as we saw, and taking the float out, and then going in and changing these jets. Uh, these jets look like they are a, they should have a size marked on them. Super dirty. It looks like this is a uh, 54. You can see that there. There's a 54 marked on that jet, so if anything, I'd say this truck probably needs to have a couple smaller size jets in it, just because it's running so rich right now. And here comes the other jet out of here. Oops. Oh, throwing things. And just for good measure, so it's a good idea to make sure these things match. And looks like this thing also says 54, there's an F or a P on the end of it. I can't really tell what that is, but hopefully we can see what it is. I'll clean those out super good. Dump this trash out of here. <clears throat> you can see that's you can see that's all the junk that was sitting inside that bowl, which is not good. There's still a load of stuff down inside of here around the base of this power valve. Just debris and uh, different junk there. So who knows what all that stuff is, but we'll get it cleaned up, get it out of there. So the carburetor sits on the vehicle. Normally we see it sit on the manifold like this. Uh, so at this point I'm going to turn it over and we're going to work on taking this power valve out and we'll take these two low speed Make sure screws out of here as well. I take this base gasket off and discard this guy. And we'll take these two mixture screws out. Hopefully we can see these mixture screws. I'll put, I'll put some more light on this. All right, so here we've got a mixture screw for the, which would be the passenger side and the driver side. So we're gonna take these out. Let's just leave them. Try to leave them where they're at. We're gonna screw them all the way down. We're going to count the turns as we go. So this one here, so what we'd normally do is we would just turn these all the way in until they bottomed out and try to count the number of turns. These seem to have a lot of gunk in them. So what I'm going to do is just clean these off with some carburetor cleaner and see if we can't get some of this carb cleaner worked down into those threads. But I'm still going to try to keep track of how many turns I turn them in. We're going to count our turns in halves. So I got about a quarter turn in there. So there's a half there. And there's three quarters. And there's one full turn. Work it back and forth. And there's one and a quarter. There's one and a half, which is about where they should be. I'm going to keep going, it looks like. There's one and a half. So there's two turns in. I don't have to tear this thing up too bad. So we're at two. I got a two and a quarter here. There's two and a quarter. There's two and a half there. And it feels like it's about bottomed out there. I don't want to run it in too much further. Well, oh, there's two and a half. What is that, three? And three and a quarter. Well, might go dang near, dang near three and a half, so I think we're going to call it good at three and a half. And we'll take it out the rest of the way and we'll just make sure we reset that. Back this out three and a half turns, we could have put it back together. There's quite a bit of corrosion and gunk on the end of that, this thing here. You can see that corrosion and junk on there. We'll make sure we get all that stuff off of there. But the same thing here. These should be typically set relatively close to each other. So one, we find one's three and a half, the other one we'd expect to be see about three and a half. So here's half. One. One and a half. Let's try 
I don't want to go much further than that. Take that out. Half. One. One and a half. Get some more junk in there. That's awful. There's five on this side almost. So typically, if these are out more than a turn and a half to two turns, you need to make a jetting a jetting adjustment. Um, so this carb here, I wouldn't assume it would need a jetting adjustment since it's a factory carb. Um, but it definitely makes you wonder if somebody didn't know what they were doing. You know, they're just adjusting this screw, just turning it, hoping for the best results. Or, if they had it running that rich on the bottom end to try to mask some other problem that's going on with it. Well, that doesn't look nearly as bad coming out of there. Well, it was out a good number of turns. If it doesn't want to come off there, we'll just kind of put a screwdriver under there and uh, pry it up gently. And there it goes. There's some fuel coming out of there. And so again, there's a clean spot. Again, we see two more parts that we saw on the kit here. Um, so we'll just put this cover aside. We'll clean it up after in a minute. Um, but again, we see we had a power valve to replace here and here's the new power valve that came with it and then we see this gasket that went on here as well that came on our kit so there's two more parts we'll take note of that we'll use those here in a minute um, this just takes a big crescent wrench and this comes out of here I'll take a razor blade and clean this gasket material off of here okay so we get a big crescent wrench here and clamp onto this thing well that's interesting it's not really even tight in there it seems like that might not be good so I'll take this out. There's a chance this carburetor's been rebuilt in the past before. But it's always a good idea to see if you can find a, some sort of a, a marking on these power valves. They're actually uh, sized with a number on them typically. And if you change the number too drastically, you can find that you get some pretty poor running performance. Um, this one appears to not be marked. I'm going to guess that it's part of a rebuild kit that somebody put in this thing um, sometime in the past. 50 years, uh, but again, we'll go ahead and discard this. And again, another part from the kit that shows up here is the gasket that goes underneath the power valve. And so there's a gasket here, and there's an outside gasket as well. So we'll take this off and make sure we can, we can discard this gasket here. And we'll discard this outside gasket as well. If you look inside this hole here, we can see that there's a whole bunch of like, looks like grass or uh, other stuff that's stuck in these two little jets inside of here. Um, so that's certainly not helping our carburetor running cause here at all. I'm going to take this center screw out of here. And this is, uh, this is on top of the venturi plate here. Hmm. It does look like there's a jet here in this, so we'll need to put some cleaner through this hole here and it flows up to this uh, these two ports on the side of this screw here, which are here, and on the other side there's one there too. So we'll be sure to put some carburetor cleaner through there, clean that out. Uh, let's see, these venturis appears to let us come up out of here. Aha, there's where that other gasket goes. So it is critical to take these apart. There is a a jet inside of a, uh, maybe I'll call this a emulsion tube here. So what happens a lot of times is people will 
clean out these two outside jets here, or these two outside tubes. They'll clean the, the gunk out of these holes here, but they won't actually clean out the gunk that's inside of these smaller, these smaller pickup tubes inside of here. I can get some light on there. So it gets pretty gunked up, and then what happens is it actually stops the fuel from going up this passageway here. Um, Uh-oh. Also not good. This is this carburetor actually appears to be bad. Um, if you look right here up this this mark, you can actually see a crack. And if I open and close this, you can see that crack opening and closing. Um, so that's a a cracked emulsion tube. So what can happen there is this thing can actually, if it's trying to suck up fuel, it can actually work like a, a straw. If you uh, if you're at McDonald's and you have a straw that gets a hole poked in it, you know like what it is. You you gotta suck up your Coke to get a, a nice drink of it and you get a whole mouthful of air instead of uh, a good drink like you wanted there. So this could be doing the same thing to us, causing some problems. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this carburetor back together like it is, but just kind of take note that this is uh, this is not good. And, uh, there, and this should actually be replaced. If you're going to keep this carburetor and try to drive this truck every single day or even just have something that was a nice driver, you want to make sure probably replace this emulsion tube piece here. Um, but again, another gasket here that we saw in the kit. So we'll take this gasket and discard it. I'm going to leave it here just for orientation for the time being. And uh, I'll take some carburetor cleaner and clean this whole thing out. We've also got a jet here. Oh, there's, that, there's that pickup ball there. So there's a metal rod here. And this metal rod just comes out. And we'll set it to the side. And then inside of there, down in that hole, is a, I'm sure you can catch a glimpse of it, there's a metal ball in there. Let's see if I can roll it out and catch it on camera. Oop, there it came. So there's a metal ball. So make sure that that metal ball, that check ball in there, goes back in. And the kit came with a new one, so we'll, uh, we'll be sure to replace that little ball there. But just be careful that when that goes back in, that we don't turn the carburetor or upside down before we uh, put that emulsion tube cap back on there. Okay, so now the needle and seat needs to come out of here. Uh, just again, a big screwdriver on this piece. Looks like it's pretty new. Just a telltale sign that someone's probably rebuilt this carburetor sometime in the past 50 years it's been in service. Let's see if this will come out of here. But it's like everything else, it'll be just kind of barely stuck in there. Yep. Not very tight at all. And there's a gasket underneath it as well. So we'll take this off. And there's a fuel screen in there, which is always nice to have. So all the fuel that's getting pushed up through here is actually getting screened out and getting filtered. Uh, another place to look if you're having some sort of a fuel problem as well. If you've got a truck that runs funny or it seems like it's not getting enough fuel, it's quite possible that this screen could be clogged up with uh, debris and dirt from the fuel system and is blocking the fuel from coming in through the needle and seat and filling the carb up like it should. And then underneath here is this little red ring which is just a gasket that again should be in the kit. So we'll put this guy aside and we will discard this as well because the kit came with a new one. Now at this point, we can make some decisions and you can do what you want to on your carburetor if you want to clean up the outside with some vinegar and a brass brush or if you want to try to put this into a sandblast cabinet and clean it up. Uh, they make some carburetor soaks and stuff that you can soak these bodies in and they seem to work fairly well. I typically don't use them, they take too long and I'm always in a hurry. Um, so I'll go ahead and what I'm going to do now is take this carbon choke spray, and I'm going to go through each one of these holes. Any hole I can find in here, I'm going to take it and clean it out. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is just take some uh, brake cleaner to this whole body and spray the body off, brake clean, and see how clean we can get it without taking a wire brush to it.
So I took this carb, put it in the media blaster, and blasted it with some walnut shell media so it wouldn't hurt anything, but it also does a good job just cleaning all that nasty junk off of there and all the corrosion and stuff from all the years of things been on a vehicle and had a fuel leak on it and everything else. Anyway, it comes out looking pretty clean after you do that. So what I'm going to do now is just take some of this carb cleaner over the trash can because it makes a big old mess. I'm just going to go through every single hole in this carb that I can find. So anywhere that fuel might flow, especially where like the jet passages are here, the idle air mixture screw passageways, um, the passageways on the uh, booster valve down on the bottom here, the accelerator pump, and any little passage in here I'm going to make sure and go through and clean all this out. And I'll come back around with some compressed air and blow anything else out of those holes that might be left in there, residual material, any sort of gunk or old fuel varnish or anything. And then I'll go through it and I'll take the jets and the accelerator pump itself and all that stuff and I'll take the same carb cleaner and blow through every single hole that I can find and try to get it uh, really cleaned out and make sure there's no varnish or any debris left any of this stuff. Do the same thing with the venturi plate here, and I'm gonna make sure that it uh, it's flowing fuel to all these little holes in here. So you see the two little two little holes. There's one on this side, one on this side, and then as you look down here, we see some at the holes in the venturis themselves. Let's clean it through there. We'll also make sure that we can really blow in cleaner through these small ports here and these small squirters on the outside. And you should see like when you shoot fluid through one of these, it should shoot out the uh, closest squirt on the side there. And same thing when finished, we're going to follow up with some compressed air here. And here's the accelerator pump we took apart a little bit ago, and we know that we've got some passages in here we want to clean out. Ooh, there's a spider web in there. Well, I guess that thing clearly wasn't working very well. Um, so we'll discard this piece, and I'll probably take some brake cleaner. I'll take some brake cleaner and clean this thing out real well. Okay, so we'll start cleaning up the small parts on this carburetor and getting the getting it going back together. So all I'm doing here is taking the air mixture screws and putting some carb cleaner on them and getting those things ready to go back in. Sometimes something like a wire brush here might be a good idea just to put some carb cleaner on here and make sure you get all that corrosion and junk off of there. You want to be kind of gentle here. You don't want to 
bend the little the little brass tips on these jets, on these mixture screws, is they're they're pretty soft material. And you can actually bend the tips of them over. You can mar the tip, and then you run into all sorts of adjustment issues. Put that spring back on. And same thing on this guy. So now that we have everything as clean as possible, it's ready to start going back together. So the best way to do this is to get your kit and just start reassembling in the reverse order that we took things apart. So we'll start by putting the uh, seat back in for the needle and seat. So I'll try to keep everything organized and bagged up here. So for this package, we're going to pull out the seat and the seat seal, which we pulled out earlier. So there's a valve seat and a valve seat seal, the little red ring we're talking about there. So we'll put this back in. And this one here actually looks like it goes in with a socket instead of a flat out screwdriver, so that should save us from tearing anything up. And also let us make sure we get a good seal on that seat down there. So there's that in there. We can put these put the Venturi back in here with the check ball, the rod, and the gasket on the surface here. So here's this gasket. Here's our little check ball that we pulled out earlier. The kit came with a new one. It looks like it's the same size as the one that came out. Here's this aluminum rod that sat on top of the check ball. So we'll put it right back down and it's hole here in the center. It goes in the center hole here. I'm just going to drop it in. So now it's down there in the bottom. I'm going to put this rod on top of it. Again, just drop it down the same way we pulled it out. I'll put our gasket onto our venturis here. Make sure it's down there like it's supposed to. On correctly, we can see because it follows the contours of the body here where it's got an indent, and then we've got our two squirter holes are open, and we're not covering up any other holes in this venturi. And that just drops right in the same way it came out. And we'll make sure that this screw here is cleaned out. We'll take some carburetor cleaner and spray this hole and make sure it shoots out of these two uh, these two squirter holes at the top here. You can see it's shooting out in both directions. So we should be good. Put a little compressed air through there. Just to make sure everything's extra good. piece dropped back through there and this piece has this larger hole in the bottom of it and this aluminum rod we just put in has to go inside of that hole as we put this together so to make sure that that aluminum rod is sitting centered of this hole here and we carefully will capture that Oops. there we go so it drops down over there and we will screw this down carefully making sure that we don't bind that aluminum rod anyway. If we were to bind it we would stop turning it and back this off and make sure we reset it. But everything feels like it went down very easily. I turned that down by hand. Didn't require any additional force with a screwdriver or anything. So 
Now I'll put the two jets back down in the bottom section of the float bowl here. Again, clean those out with some carburetor cleaner. I mean, these are a little tricky, but it's because it makes it awkward for your hand to reach down there. And snug those up pretty well. And they're brass, so you don't want to get too carried away with how tight you make these, because you can actually rip these, rip the brass open and damage the jet. those are in there we'll turn it over and we'll put the power valve in the bottom and put that lid back on the bottom with its gaskets in here remember our kit came with a power valve and a inner gasket and outer gasket so this gasket this small round gasket just goes right onto this power valve here and make sure it's, it stays nice and centered so you put this together and just screw this down and snug it up so then we took it out here so let's put this face down and try to keep that gasket aligned as best we can. And kind of watch the gasket as it goes down and make sure you don't see it it's sticking out any sort of offsided or lopsided look here where it looks like the gasket sits nice and even all the way around is what we want. We don't want it sticking out on one side. We know we're gonna crush it and smash it then. You can see I snug that up pretty good. Uh, the gasket should hold that pretty well, but I like to make sure those are pretty snug in there. I don't like to leave those to chance to back themselves out the vibration from the motor or, motor or anything. Um, we'll put this gasket back on, and then we will put our cover back on. Again, making sure the gasket's all nice and lined up. And then our four screws to put this back in here. And we'll snug these up to hand tight and make sure they've got a good enough amount of force on them that they're not going to back off. But we, again, these aren't the strongest screws, so you don't want to really muscle them down and risk breaking one. So, next thing we're going to do is we'll put these fuel mixture screws back in the, the bottom section here. So these don't matter which side they go back into, unless you just want to keep them square. You can. But I'm going to put these in, and I'm going to I'm going to just going to reset these and start out with about a turn and a half at two turns out. With them being as off as they were, it seems like it's just a maybe a problem waiting to happen. There was some huge adjustment issue. So I think we'll just kind of give it a fresh start. So it kind of bottoms out and stops there. I'm not I'm not crushing it down. I'm just stopping you notice it you'll feel it as you turn it down it's turning turning and oh i hit something so i'm just going to back this off half one one and a half and we'll split the difference and call it one and three quarter and the same thing for the other side i'll put the screw back in the hole for our idle mixture here and so we go half, one, one, one and a half, and one three quarters. And so those were back in, set to go. They're working much more smoothly now with all that uh, debris and junk worked off of them. We'll kind of just keep moving around here and go on to the accelerator pump. This is where that had the little orange valve on the inside of it. Go back to our kit that had the orange valve in it here. And we'll get the orange. What we're going to do with this is pull this through the center hole and this piece will stick to the inside and we can pull on it until it snaps inside. 
So this will go into here. You could probably be smart to put a little bit of WD-40 or something on here. I got a little bit of PB Blast handy, so I might just put a little on my finger. Oops. After I spray the camera lens there and clean that up, um, I will we'll just drop this in this hole, no force required, and I'll just gently hold it with my finger on this side, and we'll reach down through the bowl here. You can see it uh, sticking out now. And either take a pair of pliers, your fingers, and just pull it through till you feel it just kind of drop into place. It doesn't take a lot of effort, and you can actually see when it comes through that there is a little still bump that was on it on the back side here is actually just pulled to the wall of the carburetor so once that sits there it's good to go it's not going to come out no need to try to pull it through any further and risk breaking this because once it's broken you're probably stuck buying a new kit which you don't want to do so then our diaphragm cover which was here Oops, this way so this would be a little tricky to get back on, but remember from taking it apart that we had a inner hole and an outer hole here. The outer hole being for a smaller accelerator shot and the inside being for the larger accelerator shot. Uh, so I'll hook that onto the arm here and it has to kind of turn sideways and go on. And so now that's on there and so it's hooked to the rod again. And then we need to put the spring back underneath here, which remember it faced up in a conical shape like a cone. So that sat there. And then this all has to come together in kind of this floppy, falling apart <laughs> semi-alignment here. And so make sure the spring is in the center of this diaphragm. It will come down centered and you should be able to hold it down with your finger while you align the screws and the gasket. And just kind of kind of shake it and get a little bit of a, a shimmy here. And what we're trying to do is get these screws to fall into the gasket and fall through the gasket into their perspective holes they go into here. Get a little bit of shot of that. There we go. And as they get working, I'll take a ratchet and start working them down. I'm not going to tighten these screws up yet. I'm just kind of, I'm just slowly working them down to make sure they see, to make sure we don't disrupt this gasket at all. And so now they're holding, and I can let go of this with my two index fingers I was using to hold it down. And so it's sitting here, but it's still probably kind of loose. If you needed to make a last minute adjustment, you probably could. But you can see that as you work the accelerator now, that the, um, Accelerator pump is actually working in conjunction like it's supposed to there. So we'll go ahead and keep working around here and just tighten these screws up slowly. I'm not crushing these screws down by any means, I'm just snugging them up gently. i got a couple that feel like maybe they're a little bit too short and somebody's gotten a little too carried away with them in the past. So what I might try to do is find something that's just a couple threads longer for each one of these and see if that fixes my fuel problem. Hopefully you don't have this problem on your carburetor and you can just snug these up and go. Um, but So I'll probably just see if I can go find a flathead slotted screw that's just a tad longer for these two here and run that down in there. But. As long as this arm is underneath here for this cap that goes over the bowl and when you open the throttle from the actual accelerator pedal it actually pulls the accelerator pump you should be back functioning and doing very well. So I'm pull this new seat out of here and it'll take the old seat off the float here. The float has a seat on it. I'm just going to take this seat off and try to discard it by flipping that rod up and just taking this seat out. And here's the new seat, which looks like it must have a hanger on it. So 
So the seat comes with a new hanger. So next we'll keep going on this float install. Um, so the new needle comes with a very small retainer. And you can see the retainer has a hook on one end, a hanger on the other end side of it. So it seems kind of intuitive here, but the seat is going to hook inside of this uh, retainer here. And so I'm going to do is just hook this in here. Easier said than done. And so now it's hooked in there and it can swivel around and it can hang from the freely from that float. So now I'm going to hang this back on the float here. And so hang this on here and so it's just going to hang free. And as we go to install this, this spring on the back here is like an assist, the spring on the back here is like an assist spring. And so it's going to hook underneath. Take this float back off of here so I don't drop it. So this spring is going to act like a like a lift assist. So what it's going to do is we're going to push this down, let the back wall of the carburetor hold it. You can see that this spring wraps around the back and goes underneath the tab of the float, almost to lift the float up, if you will. So it sits in the the body of the carburetor. This spring is being pushed down in the back, which is putting force on the underside of the tab here and it's almost lifting this float if you will. So what we're going to mimic as this thing goes down into the hole. I'm going to hang the new needle onto the float and then what we'll do is I'm going to hold my, in my index finger the spring down and as we go down we're going to line up the needle with the seat that it goes into, the spring is going to kind of ride back against this back wall of the carb here, and then the hinge pin is going to ride in these slots here and here. And so, I'm going to kind of just set it all in place here, kind of carefully, and that needle is going into its place, and the spring's against the wall. I'm just going to kind of take my finger out gently. And so now, this float is sitting here, it's sitting in here, it's not captured, this is a retainer to actually capture it. But to, before we capture it and actually lock this down to the back, it's probably a good idea to push this down and see how level that float sits in there. So this actually looks like it's pretty close, it could be a, it could be a tad high, so we might, I'm just going to try to set that float level, oops. So the float there looks like it might be a little off. I'm going to, like it could be a tad high out on this end. So maybe a good idea just to bend that tab down just a little bit so it shuts the fuel flow off just a tad sooner like here instead of up here. So I'll take it back out. I'll bend that tab down just slightly. The tab is sitting just over the seat there. And then we'll reinstall this float and see if it sets a little more level. So it just lifts up out of here. Again, keep, you have to keep an eye on the spring in the back and make sure it doesn't shoot out. So it's easy to just put your finger over that spring and lift it up. And just release the tension from it. And then it doesn't, it doesn't fly off anywhere. I just got a pair of pliers handy and I'm just ever so gently going to... I'll take this seat needle off and gently just kind of give this thing a little... Slight bend in the downward direction here. Let's see if we can get this out causing too much problem. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit. And we will rehang the needle. Bring the, oops, bring the catch up on top. Rehang the needle. Spring down. Back against the wall. Needle on its seat, pin in the hangers, and oops, and that looks better. So now where the needle seating is has a floated more of a level a level stance. It's not coming up as high as it was. So I think we'll call that good. We'll flip this keeper latch back over and this latches back around the back of the needle the seat housing. 
And so what we're going to do is take a small screwdriver and pop that over the housing until it clicks like that and it's in place. You can touch it, tap it, it doesn't move, it doesn't want to jump out of there. But it keeps the float retained in its, its location, it keeps it retained into its hinge pin points here, which is excellent. So at this point, we don't have any parts left except for the top hat, which we'll put on. And there's a gasket that goes on top of here. We noticed earlier the one that had the three holes in it. We'll put a new gasket on, put the top on, while we align the choke fast idle arm here. So I was able to find a tad longer Phillips head screw and put it in this spot here. So it doesn't actually look correct, but at least it holds and hopefully we'll seal this leak up here and let our keep fuel from leaking down on the manifold and causing a fire. I'm not planning on using this carburetor very long. I just wanted to get it rebuilt and run a few tests with it, kind of see what the truck does, see if we can make the truck run and then replace it and maybe change it to a four barrel or something. Take that back. There's a step in on this side of it here, so I'm going to make sure that follows. There's a straight side and a step side. And let's see here. One side lines up better than the other. Yeah, that seems to be the more consistent there, the straight side and then a, a step side. So we'll keep that lined up just like that. And then this cover we'll have to go back on. Um, the fast idle slash choke rod will have to go back through this plastic hole here just the same way it came out. So we'll have to kind of gently maneuver this with this cap over the uh, foot bowl here. Oops. And kind of work this thing on down. Looks like I got my piece cap release. If I can get my fast idle rod to work here. Play a little nicer. There it goes. Oops. Here's all that. Hopefully these. Yeah, it looks like it's all lined up here. Looks like you got a pretty nice gasket line here. I don't see any gaps in it, any air gaps or anything. I'll flip it over and. Again, you can see the gasket underneath there, nice and even. And, oops, I kind of dropped the cover, but again, I think we're good to put screws in it and snug those down. So I'm just going to visually look down these holes here and line them up with the threads underneath and make sure the gasket isn't getting tangled up or anything. And then we'll put our screws back in. So then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put these screws back in here. Again, I'm just going to start these by hand and making sure they're not binding up, making sure they're not biting the gasket in any sort of weird way. A little off here. And again, I'm going to just run these down evenly and gently. I'm not going to tighten any of them up yet. I just want to make sure that we're sitting on here correctly. We might move the linkage around, make sure that everything's moving nice and free. Nothing's binding, nothing's causing any problems. We're just starting to get snug. So leave them kind of loose, make sure everything is kind of working like it should here. The so that appears to be the so that's the choke there, and it should be working that plate with the plate needs a spring on it to actually work correctly. Maybe some oil it feels like. Um but in the meantime I think that everything's okay. The Auto linkage seems to work nice and free. Let's go ahead and snug these top cap screws down. Just check that gasket one more time as we go around, make sure everything's sitting 
like it's supposed to be. As you go around and work these screws down. And again, tighten these in a cross pattern as much as possible. And I'm not snugging these down tightly yet. I'm just gently seating these. Making sure everything is kind of sitting where it wants to sit. This cap just kind of sits on here. We also need to put that center post back in before we tighten this down too much. So take the center post we took out and we'll put it right back down in here. And that threads in by hand nicely, so another good sign that everything's uh, nice. I'll take this and hope with this will put most of the pressure on that, that top cap. And I'll go around here and tighten these screws up. Okay, this will be the linkage cap back for the choke. And we're going to set that back to about where we found it. Remember it had just a, almost a sixteenth of an inch where it was kind of submerged. With a post in there was kind of submerged. So we'll set it back about where we found it. Knowing that we might have to adjust it just a tad, but hopefully yours doesn't have this problem and we can not have to worry about it. And put a little bit of oil on there too. PB blaster handy again. So put a little drop here in this point. I'll put a little drop here in this point. And see if we can't get this choke plate to work a little more freely for us. That seems like it might, have, might be moving now. Let's see if it'll move down here. Oh yeah. So now it's pulling it down like it's supposed to with the actual linkage. So if you're to Hook the choke back up inside the truck, pull it shut, it shuts it, and then opens it back up to a Edwards full back full open there. So, shouldn't have a problem with that anymore. Okay, I think besides setting the idle in this thing, um, which will, I've got to find a another screw because I took the uh, the broken screw out of the um, the actual idle. Auto stop here, and so I have to find another screw around here and use that as my my new idle screw. So I'll find that, I'll put that in there, and we'll see if we can't adjust this so that our um, transfer slots are adjusted correctly here. And we'll walk through that in just a second. So I got my idle screw worked out. I had to run a 10 30 seconds tap down through this hole here where that screw had broken out. Just to clean the thing up and get some threads back in it. I found an old 10 30 second screw. There's a tap that I used. I found an old 10 30 second screw I had laying in a drawer. Um, looks like it's probably, oh, I don't know, inch and a half long. And then I actually pulled a idle adjustment screw off a old Walbro carburetor off of a weed eater for like some sort of a resistance spring so the thing doesn't change its idle as we're driving on the road. So it seems like it's going to work. Seems like it'll go in here and turn itself down. And I can get it to turn down against the lock washer that's on it. And it seems to put some pressure on the spring. It's not a perfect solution, but it does seem to work. And it touches the throttle blades about there, where it just starts to kind of put some pressure on the spring and hold it there for us. So hopefully that works out just fine. Um, it looks like the idle is set a tad high here. What I'm looking at is this uh, transfer port. Something I'm pointing with here. There's a, this, this little slot right here. This, uh, this little black slot you see, it's called a transfer slot. So what it's supposed to be doing is sucking a tiny bit of fuel out of here whenever it's idling. Um, the way that Holly says to adjust these is to adjust them so that they look like a square whenever you have the throttle all the way closed. Um, so right now the throttle is able to go and turn them back all the way here and basically close off those transfer ports. And so you can barely see the tip of one transfer port right here and this one you can't see at all. As you crack them open you can start to see the transfer ports up here. Well Holly says the way you adjust these, and this is not a Holly carburetor but I don't know what else to go off of, 
um, is to adjust that slot there so that it looks like a square. So that's about a 20 thousandths wide slot, so you'd have this thing just cracked open. And that, that should be about a perfect idle for you. It's supposed to give you the best like off idle acceleration and all that. It's supposed to give you a good clean idle where it's not just dumping tons of fuel. Um, just off a little bit, make sure we're good and clean, put our base gaskets on it, and we'll put this thing back on the truck. Okay, here we go. Let me get a little healthy shot of starter fluid in there, see if we can help that fuel pump a little bit, instead of having to fill that bowl back up. <laughs> 